In 1947, World War II was over, but tensions between the United States and the USSR were still high. UFO sightings were abnormally high that year because people were on high alert when they were looking at the sky. The CIA believed that it was always possible that the Russians invented weapons that were far superior to what America had at their disposal. After a few key incidents in the 1940s forced the government to question their understanding of UFOs, the CIA and the United States Air Force came together to create the top secret mission called Project Blue Book. The goal was to decide if these objects were a threat to the American people and to also study the technology as much as possible. Captain Edward Rappelt was head of the project. He recorded over 12,000 individual incidents that had been reported to the government. He indeed was the first person to coin the term unidentified flying object. Rappelt used science and psychology to study the data on UFO sightings. He eliminated the vast majority of the sightings that had been reported due to logical explanations. He spent far more time studying the truly unbelievable cases that defied logical explanation. These fell under an extraterrestrial theory, as in the possibility that these were from another world. Number 10. The Kenneth Arnold Sighting In 1947, a pilot named Kenneth Arnold was flying a private plane in Idaho when he spotted nine silver disks flying over Mount Rainier. They were moving so fast, he estimated they must have been flying over 1,200 miles per hour at 10,000 feet. This was nearly double the average speed of any airplane used during the war. Arnold estimated that these objects were more than 100 feet wide. He reported this sighting to the authorities immediately. The government debates whether these objects were real or if Arnold had imagined them. There were no weather balloons in that area, so there truly was no explanation that they could come up with which would explain what he saw. The press ate up this story, and after speaking to Arnold, they coined the term flying saucer to describe these objects that he had seen. Number 9. The Roswell Incident Even if you're not into UFO research, nearly everyone has at least heard of the Roswell Incident. This was yet another huge case in 1947 that led to the creation of Project Blue Book. A silver disc crashed on Foster Ranch, which was just outside of Roswell, New Mexico. Witnesses rushed to the crash site and claimed that they saw a spaceship. Members of the Air Force from a nearby base showed up to examine the crash site, and they carried away all of the evidence that they could find. Some witnesses claimed that they saw agents carrying away small bodies of aliens from the crash. That same day, they told the press that they had discovered a real flying saucer. The very next day, the government retracted that statement and released photographs of agents kneeling next to materials from a broken weather balloon. The Air Force said that the bodies people witnessed carried away were actually dummies that had been tied to the balloons. The space probes that fell from the sky truly did look like flying saucers, but the government was unwilling to explain this technology to the public until years later. However, for UFO believers, this information it was too little too late, and they believe that the government is just coming up with rational explanations to satisfy public inquiry. On top of that, the Air Force officer who arrived on the scene, Jesse Marcel, gave an interview in which he said that he did not believe that this crash was actually a weather balloon, but he was forced by his commanding officer to lie to the press. He said that a piece of foil he picked up from the crash was as thin as the foil on a packet of cigarettes, but it was so strong that he couldn't bend or dent it, even with a sledgehammer. Number 8. Dahl and the Men in Black in June of 1947, a man named Harold Dahl was on his boat with his son and his dog. About 1,500 feet above, they could see silver donut-shaped objects flying in the sky. One of the objects it began to fall. The metal debris sliced his son's arm open, and it killed their dog. Dahl told his boss about the incident. He didn't believe him, so he went to see for himself. He witnessed the same UFOs in the sky. A few days later, a man wearing a black suit and fedora showed up, threatening to ruin Dahl's life if he ever spoke to anyone about what he saw that day on the boat. Obviously, Dahl still told people about it when we're talking about it right now. This became known as the Maury Island Incident. This is considered to be the first sighting of the Men in Black. We now know that this incident occurred mere months before the Project Blue Book initiative started. It was incidents like these that made it necessary to have a task force looking after these UFO cases and taking testimonies seriously with scientific inquiry, rather than threatening to silence the witnesses, like with the men in black. Number 7. The Kinross Incident in 1953, Air Traffic Command at the Kinross Air Base in Michigan detected an unidentified flying object soaring over Lake Superior at 500 miles per hour. The blip failed to communicate over the radio, so a pilot called Lieutenant Felix Monclar Jr. and his radar assistant, Lieutenant R. R. Wilson, jumped into a jet to chase after this UFO. Air Traffic Control watched the jet and the UFO blip on the radar, and then both objects suddenly vanished at the same time. They described it as the mystery blip simply swallowing the other blip. The Air Force sent rescue planes to search for the jet and even dove into the water all over Lake Superior looking for the crash. None of the remnants 
were ever found. The agents of Project Blue Book investigated the scene of the missing aircraft and alluded to the fact that they had seen similar incidents happen before. In years later, the U.S. government tried to claim that the mystery blip was an airplane from the Canadian Royal Air Force, but the Canadian government has denied that it was their plane. Number 6. The Leveland Case in 1957, two men in Leveland, Texas, witnessed a rocket taking off in the middle of a field and then flying towards their truck at full speed. Their engine failed and it was impossible for them to drive away. They were scared for their lives, so they jumped out of the vehicle and into a nearby ditch. As the rocket flew over them, they felt an immense amount of heat. As soon as the rocket was far away, their truck started back up again. They drove home and called the police. Sheriff Weir Clem thought that this was a prank and he decided to brush off the first phone call. That same night, several other people called in to say that a glowing ball of light descended from the sky and hovered near their cars, causing all of their engines to fail simultaneously. After the ball flew away, their cars simply worked again. There were a total of 15 calls to the police who all reported similar incidents at different times in different locations around the city. Sheriff Weir Clem jumped into his car to investigate and at 1.30 a.m. that night, he witnessed the phenomenon at first hand. His police cruiser stopped working for a moment until the UFO went away. The government investigated the scene and took statements from the witnesses. They blamed it on a lightning storm, even though there was no storm that night. The government called it ball lightning, which is an unexplained phenomenon that has been recorded since the 1800s. This is interesting, though, because ball lightning is incredibly rare and it only occurs during thunderstorms. So it doesn't really make sense that this would happen multiple times in a single night when it was clear. It also doesn't account for the reports of the rocket. A professor named Alan Heineck, who assisted during Project Blue Book, wasn't satisfied with this explanation either. He wrote that there is an absence of evidence that ball lightning can stop cars and put out headlights. Number 5. The Lubbock Lights In August of 1951, a group of college professors were sitting together in a backyard in Lubbock, Texas. They noticed bluish-green lights flying above them in formation, similar to a flock of birds. Over the course of that week, several other people in the town noticed these same lights appearing at night. A man named Carl Hart managed to take five photographs. While they were taken in black and white, it was clear that these lights are in a formation and that it doesn't look like any aircraft that we know of. The photographs were published in local newspapers and even made their way into Life magazine. When studying Seeing the five photographs, Edward Rappelt from Project Blue Book noted that every time a light moved, it was in a pattern. They were traveling at 600 miles per hour at over 2,000 feet in the air. In 1997, an incredibly similar sighting happened over Phoenix, Arizona, that was witnessed by over 20,000 people. Many witnesses claimed that they saw one gigantic airship and the lights were in a V formation on the edge of the UFO. The Air Force eventually came forward to say that they had been conducting a mission called Project Snowbird, where they were test piloting jets in the middle of the night and dropped several flares from the sky. However, people have tried to recreate the phenomena by dropping flares from planes, and it didn't look anything like the Phoenix Lights, and the timing reported by the government, it simply doesn't add up. For both incidents, there is really no rational explanation that makes any sense. Number 4. The Washington, D.C. UFO Incident of 1952 on July the 19th, 1952, air traffic control at Washington National Airport spotted seven unidentified blips on their radar. Witnesses all over Washington, D.C. could also see these objects with their own eyes. They were described as orange lights that would hover and then randomly move at extreme speeds before hovering in place again. People were so scared of what they saw in the sky that they were calling the police so much that the city's communication system it simply crashed. The government claimed that these were weather balloons. However, weather balloons are so small that they don't normally show up on radar, and there are never seven of them in a cluster. They were also moving faster than any airplane the air traffic controller had ever seen. The agents working with Project Blue Book knew that these UFOs were very real, but the widespread panic in Washington, D.C. was a sign that people could not handle even the possibility of aliens and UFOs. From then on, the government began taking the stance that if anyone claimed UFOs were real, they would start gaslighting them. Witnesses who reported incidents were now questioned about their sanity or accused of using drugs. The public stopped reporting everything they saw in the sky for fear of earning a reputation of being crazy. Number 3. Barney and Betty Hill In 1961, a married couple called Barney and Betty Hill were on their way home from vacation. They were driving through a rural part of New Hampshire in the middle of the night when they spotted a flying object above them. They thought that it was a satellite, so they pulled the car over to look with their binoculars. At the time, satellites were still very new technology, so it was very exciting to spot one. The Hills could see that it was an aircraft roughly a thousand feet off the ground, so they assumed it was a low-flying airplane. They described the UFO as being shaped like a pancake with windows all around it. The craft did not
not need to turn around, and it could move back and forth freely at very high speeds, so there was no way that the car could drive fast enough to escape. When they looked at their watches, they realized that two hours had passed at the blink of an eye, and they had no memory for a long time. After this incident, they both began to have horrible nightmares almost every night. It got so bad that they needed to seek help from a psychiatrist. Both Barney and Betty Hill went under hypnosis separately to help them recover their suppressed memories of that night, and they both remembered identical incidents of being abducted by the people or aliens in this craft and having experiments conducted on them. There are over 10 hours of these interviews. When Barney goes through his memories, he's very calm and rational for most of the interview. Then, in the moments when he describes interacting with the aliens, he has fits of screaming and extreme fear. He talks about trying to run or reaching for his gun. At one point, as he is reliving his memories in a dreamlike state, he says, I don't understand. Are we being robbed? When he was asked to describe what the aliens looked like, he said that one of them was a friendly, red-headed Irishman, while another had an evil face like a German Nazi. Everyone on the ship wore black military uniforms, and they all had slanted eyes. He also insinuated that he could communicate with these people without speaking. He said, They are in my brain. In the adaptations of Barney and Betty Hill's encounter, artists always make these men in uniform out to be far more alien-like than what they actually testified. However, they repeat on multiple occasions that they were abducted and experimented on by men. The agents from Project Blue Book interviewed the Hills, and they were told to keep their story a secret. This case is considered to be the first recorded alien abduction story. Since the Hills were a mixed-race couple in the 1960s, they began receiving death threats. In a lot of ways, this incident it actually ruined their reputations. They wouldn't have gained anything from lying about this. Something Something clearly happened to them, but whether it was aliens or some advanced technology here on Earth, we'll never know. Number 2. Portage County UFO Chase in 1966, a police officer named Dale Spore in Portage County, PA, was investigating an abandoned vehicle when he witnessed a glowing aircraft rising out of the woods. He could hear a loud engine and feel a huge amount of heat blowing on him as it rose into the air. When it was in the sky, he could see that it was a silver disc-shaped UFO. He chased after it in his squad car and got in his radio for backup. Other police officers joined in the chase, and they followed the object for 86 miles. Government agents from Project Blue Book showed up to listen to the testimony from police officers. The officers were told that they saw the light retracting off of the planet Venus, which was apparently visible that day. At this point, new leadership had taken over Project Blue Book. Instead of performing experiments and taking actual scientific inquiry into the cases, they would just show up and debunk everything. This incident completely ruined Officer Dale Spore's life. He became the laughingstock of the town, labeled as crazy for believing in UFOs. His wife left him with the kids, he was fired from his job, and he had almost nothing left. He had to move to West Virginia to work in a coal mine where he fell 70 feet down a shaft and broke his back. He never backed down from his story, but did say that he wished he never saw anything. Number 1. The Phenomenon of Blank The CIA hired a nuclear physicist named Edward Condon to go through Edward Ruppelt's reports with the goal of debunking his findings. Condon had worked on the Manhattan Project, and he was an expert in nuclear weapons. In 1968, he released what is known as the Condon Report, which basically declares that an extraterrestrial explanation of UFOs is unlikely. Project Blue Book disbanded in 1969, and the internal government memo claimed that the CIA had concluded that UFOs were not dangerous and that extraterrestrial life did not exist. But 20 years later, someone high up in the government was sending letters to William Sessions, who was the director of the FBI at the time. Even though these were declassified documents, the identity of the writer was still redacted by covering it with a black sharpie. This person wrote several letters with Sessions about the possibility of having the FBI pick up where the CIA and Air Force left off. Apparently, they had both agreed that UFOs and aliens may actually be real. In one of the letters, the anonymous writer says to Sessions, You may recall that while you were in Fort Smith visiting your father, I called and briefly mentioned my desire to discuss the phenomenon of blank in general and the role of the U.S. government participation. In the same letter, the writer mentions a government cover-up involving alien bodies. For whatever reason, the FBI redacted a single word. Whoever wrote these letters had an incredibly powerful position in the government. They had access to top-secret information. They mentioned receiving phone calls from the Pentagon, and he has the director of the FBI's personal phone number. Whoever this person was, the government doesn't want us to know who it is, possibly because it may have been a well-known name. At the very end of one of the letters, the anonymous person writes about their mutual friend, stating, P.S. As the ultimate challenge, why not ask President Bush himself? So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this, seven days a week. And as always, thank you for watching.